Always be looking. Always be looking. Always be watching. Always be lurking. Always be about your business and about your money and about your paper. Big Worm was not playing about his $200 and neither am I. And little Miss Parker Pookaloo. My little Parky baby. She's having fun playing with her toys. I just disturbed her. Y'all, but I wanted to hop back on YouTube and talk to my mommy gang gang about child support court. Y'all, let's get out. The good thing about it in Houston or in Texas, rather, is that they're doing it on Zoom only. So I don't, you don't have to sit in court. Like, I'm literally sitting in my computer watching whatever I want to watch on TV, cooking whatever I want to cook, tending to my baby. So that is what made the process a lot easier. But for those of y'all who are thinking about child support or going to child support court, filing in your state, whatever the case may be, I 100% think that if you're not married, or if you're not in a relationship, or if he has gone MIA, file child support on his ass and let them figure it out and be patient with it. That number one, be patient with the court process. I know, like I Parker's almost a year and I haven't got child support for her. I file, I filed child support back in June and um, of 2021, so almost a year ago, and I still haven't got child support. For her um a little bit about my personal case is that um first of all first of all first of all first of all oh whoa 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 oh if you mommy gang 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 thank you for coming back if this is your first time hey girl uh, hey mm -hmm. um go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then hit that like button so we can get this video numbers up so i can continue dropping this content off of y'all if my baby stop hitting my camera, Parker, you stop. Anyways, back like I was saying, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and continue to watch. All right, y'all, so I wanted to talk a little bit about my own personal um, experience with the child support system and going through child support court. I am not completely done with it, and there is, I don't know how much I can talk about an open case because I know there's some legalities to that, so I don't want to jeopardize that, but I do want to share with you guys, sorry, y'all, Parker is trying to knock over my camera so I'm trying to hold my tripod it's called being an octopus I'm in a mall it's simultaneous beat it you die you die leave it as I was saying, um, my own personal case, it hasn't been um, completed yet. Um, stop, Parker. <laughs> it's not funny. Um, yes, yeah, so my case, we're, we're still in, in my case. Like I said, it's an open case, so I don't want to jeopardize anything about it. But I do want to give y'all some tidbits that I have learned along the way throughout this process. If you do decide to file child support on your baby daddy, um, I 100% think you should if y'all are not married if y'all are not in a relationship if y'all do not have good co-parenting skills or if he has gone mia file child support period and be patient and let them and let the court work it out but if you do not have a lawyer specifically if you do not have a lawyer it is your job and your responsibility to defend yourself and to not not yourself to defend your baby to advocate for your baby to speak up for your child now um more specifically if Let's say he does not have um job. If you, if you got if you got lucky and you know ended up with a street guy or entrepreneur or self-employed person, you have to know what what to expect, what information that you need to provide. Um, if your child's father is self-employed, like let's say he does real estate or he has his own business, or let's say he's a street dude or um 
you know, a hustler or whatever the case might be, hey, how you get your money, get your money, but that money to go towards a child too. Um, so I just want to kind of share with you guys what to expect when you go to court so that you can be prepared if you're acting as your own lawyer. Like being a single mom is hard enough to try to get a, a lawyer to defend you, um, which is pretty, I can say it's pretty standard um, across the board. They ask you really black and white questions. You want to sit with mommy? You want to sit with mommy? Okay. So the first thing I want to say is, like I said, whether you have to go to court or whether you have to go or whether you're able to do it on Zoom, you want to be patient. You want to be patient with the process because you can have a court date and then let's say you had to do DNA tests and that's going to reset your court date. And then, you know, like in my situation, something else happened with a clerical error and it got reset again. So um, it's been really hard to depend on like child support as support for me because it's just been up and down unpredictable like if i filed in june we didn't get a date until december and then you know it's just been pushed back pushed back pushed back ever since then it's it's stressful that's stressful it'll be over a year once we finally be able to hopefully come to a decision so the first thing that so so the first thing that you need to know is to be patient with the process the rest of it has to do with the actual court process and i wrote it down in my phone actually um so the the things that you're going to talk about in court and y'all i'm not a lawyer this is not legal advice these are just this is just things that i've learned about the process that i want to kind of make it make sense for us so that you understand um what what the lawyer is asking you because i've even went as far as since um it's on zoom in texas you can watch um live court sessions um with the judge now the first thing when you get there you're going to probably talk to a child support officer which is an administrative assistant she just kind of gets through the paperwork and then the next once you once dna and all of that stuff is is acknowledged then you're going to go to the attorney general and the attorney general is basically the lawyer for the state. Um, and they're acting in the best interest of the child. So they're going to ask you questions like, um, you know, about conservatorship, about custody, about, you know, visitation, all of these things you need to know. So those are the things that I want to talk about. So you're, be, so you're able to answer them in a way that is beneficial for you, that you're prepared and you're not just giving an answer off the top of your head. And then once court is over, you're like, dang, I should have said this or I should have had that or I should have, you know, X, Y, Z. So um, the first, one of the first things they're going to ask you is about conservatorship, which is basically your legal rights to your child. So you have sole managing conservatorship and then you have, you also have joint managing conservatorship. And if I'm saying any of these things wrong, Google it. Okay. Because that's what I did. <laughs> but sole managing conservatorship basically says that you have the right to make decisions for your child. Like, um, medical decisions, education decisions, like everyday life decisions. So you are the sole person, mother or father are the sole person to be able to make those decisions and you don't have to have a signature for, from, from the father. So there's things like, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe, you know, for things like going to get your passport, if you are joint, then you have to have the father's signature or whatever the case may be. But if you're sold, then I believe that you're, you're the only person or signing them up for school, what school they go to. You, you, you can do that by yourself, things like that. Um, if it's joint, then it has to be two signatures on any type of legal document, which can be stressful if you're not talking to your baby daddy or if he's acting a fool, if he don't want to show up, he's just being, you know, uncooperative, then, you know, those are things that you want to think about if you want to, you know, if he, and then the only way that the judge will grant you sole managing conservatorship is if, um, he, he's, is, is neglect or violence or you know any type of family issues where it's a threat to the child um also keep in mind that when you file for child support they're going to ask you if there's any case of family violence family violence can be physical it could be mental it could be emotional so make sure if you have those fears put put everything up up front because you and him can always or you and her can always work on your relationship on the back end but when it comes to court black and white that's something that you'll always have a fallback plan for 
Um, so that's that's it on conservatorship. The next thing they're gonna ask you about is custody. So you gotta think about whether you wanna have sole custody or if you wanna have joint custody. My personal opinion, and this is just my personal opinion, if there's no family violence or threat to the child, not to you, not to you, <laughs> the person, the mom or the dad, because it could be either way, then joint custody is right because that's that person's child too. Like, you know, no matter how you feel about it, whether you don't want him around the child, you don't want him around the, the new girlfriend, that's not that's not your right to say. Because y'all not together does not mean that that child just belongs to you. That's both of y'all child. Now, whether he exercised his rights or not, that's on him. But, um, um, there's also special custody. Okay, so no, no, no. So joint custody is like I said, sole sole custody, and then where the child is with you all the time, you got right to say where they live, and then it's joint custody where standard is standard possession rights or custody is where the non custodial parent gets the first, third, and fifth weekend out of the month and then they get you rotate holidays and rotate summers and things like that now if your child is under three years old you do have different rights so if your child is under three years old there's something called phased in or modified um custody or visitation and that means that let's say like parker's almost one and her dad never has hasn't been in her life at all now it's up to the judge. All of this is up to the judge if y'all can't agree. Now, if the father has been in the, the child's life from one to, you know, one, one and a half, and then y'all broke up, and now, you know, y'all feeling some type of way, and you don't want him, then the judge is not going to just say, okay, well, this child has seen, you know, uh, him every, every, every day, and then now you want to try to give him phase dens where he can only have two hours at a time or four hours at a time. That's not right because the child is used to him. The child knows him. But if the child does not know the non-custodial parent, then you can have what's called phase in visits where every first, third, and fifth Saturday or every Saturday, whatever, how, whatever you feel comfortable with as the mother or as the father, if you have been the custodial parent and the sole provider, um, basically you can go from two hour visits, supervised or unsupervised. You can go four hour visits, supervised or unsupervised, eight hour visits, and then one overnight visit. So let's say, for example, I have a daughter, she's, or, or you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it all completely out of my context. I'm going to say you have a son and he's eight months old and the father has never really been around. He's waiting on his visitation rights. Legally, you can say, okay, well, I would like for, to have three or four months of supervised visits for two hours every Saturday and you know or every other saturday whatever the case may be so this is something that you have to think about beforehand um and uh, and that's all the way up until the child is um two and a half years to three old three years old so let's say you say okay well i want the next four months to be every other saturday he gets the child for two hours supervised supervised by his mom supervised by my mom or supervised by, by me and then once he goes through those four months of two hour visits then i wanted to go to four hour visits uh, and this is the extended extended plan because it could just be that and then it goes to joint custody or it could be you know one overnight and then i want you know and that's what I realized in these court cases is that these ladies don't 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 know what to say, you know, to protect their child. They're just like, oh, I think it should be three or four supervised visits, but they don't know that they can say 16. You know what I'm saying? So know the number that you want in your head and, and what makes sense for the child, you know, because you it's, it's, it's not healthy for, for anybody to just give your child away to somebody that they don't know, even if it is their dad. Like, that's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, you need, ch children need consistency. Children need to be familiar. They they also have, nine times ten have a routine. And if you just give them to somebody else and now their routine is going back and forth, back and forth, that's not in the best interest of the child. Mom, mama, mama, mama. Um, yeah, so definitely think about that. And like I said, so let me finish. So the, the extended, extended plan is two hours, four hours, 
eight hours so they kind of get the full day so let's say you say from 10 to 6 or something like that on a saturday um you can also do twice a week whatever whatever you feel like is best and then you can go to the overnight um the saturday from six o'clock to sunday to six o'clock overnight visits and then after that then it can go to joint custody now this doesn't matter if the child is eight months or eight years old you know it can still be whatever number and the judge is gonna have the final say anyway but it's up to you to advocate for your child so that's something that i didn't know that's good to know um so that i, I kind of did custody and visitation um in the same now granted once the child once the father or the mother the non-custodial parent completes their visitation nine times out of ten it's going to go to joint custody period that that is only a temporary order it's going to go to cu joint custody because that's that that, that y'all share that child and i and i see women get emotional like you know he don't deserve to have her or i don't want him around his girlfriend because and the judge is like that's up to him to control his girlfriend because you can have your child around a boyfriend that he don't agree with and he can't control that so i think that's probably the hardest thing to wrap your mind around is that no matter what you think about the non-custodial parent y'all still share a child together period and you can try to control it as much, but being fair to your child, what makes sense for your child to have a real relationship without you with their other parent? That's fair. Like, that's fair. So that was custody. Custody is joint or managing. Uh, I mean, joint or, joint or sole custody. And then visitations can go from standard to phased in or modified to standard visitations. So I hope that made sense. And then the fourth thing you're going to talk about is support. Now, nine times out of 10, if he has a job, his income is reported, they're gonna take it out of his check. He ain't even got no control over that. It is what it is. But if he does not have a job, or if he's an entrepreneur, or if he's a, a what it's called, hustler, a scammer, a drug dealer, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I ain't just have nobody make that money like I said. But it's up to you to know because they, otherwise they're going to do what, what they call impute income. Like if he doesn't have a paper income or he hasn't filed a W-2 or a 1099 or his taxes or whatever, they are going to impute his income to minimum wage if you cannot prove what his income is. And I don't mean, oh, he sent me this money for this or he sent me this money for this. I know he got money. You have to actually know where the money resides physically on paper. Um, so you're going to either have to get his bank account subpoenaed, his, you know, if he has businesses, his business account subpoenaed, where he has to provide bank statements that show, you know, that would give an actual number for what his income is on a monthly basis. Um, cash app, bank accounts, business accounts, whatever has a, 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 a digital blueprint, a fingerprint of where his money is, you're going to have to be able to provide that. Like you're going to have to know, okay, well he has a bank account with Chase. Okay, well, he has a cash app. He go his cash tag. He has, you know, X, Y, Z. Money doesn't really, like, because, you know, you know, I, like I said, I don't want to make this personal. But if he's giving you money in the past, that still doesn't say what his income is. So, let's say he's giving you $1,000 or $200 or $50, you know, over, over the course of the last three months. And you say, oh, well, Judge, he gave me $1,500. I know he got money. He just stopped giving me money. Well, the judge is going to be like, okay, well, do you know how much he made? Because I can't give you child support based off of him giving you $1,500 in three months and your child is six years old. You have to know where the money is um, in order to get it subpoenaed. Um, and the court will do that for you. Like, especially if you have filed with, now if you have a lawyer, your lawyer will know all of this. But if you um, have filed like through the government, um, they will do it. Um, but you just have to have enough proof that of lifestyle but even lifestyle isn't enough like I, i'm trying to say this without saying it because like i said i don't want to jeopardize my case but um you know I, every everything matters everything matters get your details in order get you know always be looking always be looking always be watching always be lurking always be about your business and about your money and about your paper big worm was not playing about his 200 dollars, and neither am i okay so like i said if you don't know how he's getting paid um they'll impute his income to minimum wage and you're probably gonna get 200 dollars for the month girl and whatever you know medicaid reimbursement or back child support is gonna be based off of that and that's it so what i'm doing with that um yeah 
So um, that is the fourth thing. The fifth thing is gonna be medical and dental support. The father is or the non-custodial parent is responsible for medical and dental uh, support. So um, it, you can either have it through the government and then he has to reimburse the government or if he has access to private insurance, he can put them on his private insurance or if you have access to private insurance, you can put them on your private insurance and then he reimburses you for the cost of the insurance to carry. Um, but that is the responsibility of the father to pay for medical and dental support. Um, retroactive support, which is back child support. You have the option to say you want back child support for the times that he was not there or that you don't want to, to, for, for back child support. So, um, and, and another thing to go back into the actual child support is that you can also deviate. You can deviate higher or you can deviate lower. It's up to you guys. So when I say deviate, that means that, okay, well, let's say he get a check and his check is X, Y, Z, but you also know he got a side hustle. So you asking, okay, judge, I'm asking for a little more because he makes more. Or you could say, judge, nah, well, he also helps me do pick up the kids from school. So I know you want to pay 500, but can we just do 350 because, you know, he, he, he do what he's supposed to do, whatever the case may be. So you can deviate as well. Um, retroactive support, if you say you don't want retroactive support from all the time that he missed and they will go back to the birth of that child, if he don't have any proof or the non-custodial parent did not have any proof that they've given you money, they will go back to the birth of the child and he has to pay you back for whatever um, the amount of the child support is. Um, and then you also are going to talk about disclosures. So if there's family violence, any type of family violence on the case and you don't want your number or, or your address to be disclosed, you can ask for non-disclosure. But if there's no family violence, that person has a right to know where their child is. They have a right to contact you. Um, there's also like a court app that you could text through. Child, I'm not, child, please. But you know, for safety purposes, to communicate there's an app through the court that you can that you can do or whatever so you know everything is you have an option in everything you just have to know what they mean when they ask you because they're not asking you about your personal life and what he did and how he messed up and who he cheated with they don't care nothing about that they're gonna ask you black and white questions about support and visitation for the child you know, do you feel like, is there any family violence? Do you feel like it's been threatened? Okay, they may ask you what happened. Okay, well, what visitation do you want? They're gonna, like, just ask you playing like that. So are you saying that you want every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for two hours that are, is that what you're saying you want? Okay, that's what you're gonna get. You know what I'm saying? And then the judge is gonna make a final ruling on that. And he's nine times saying, uh, if y'all agree, he's gonna just say okay. If y'all don't agree, then he got the final, he or she got the final say. So, that has been my experience with child support. Um, I definitely recommend, you know, writing out everything that you want, collecting all your data, um, and just making sure that you are prepared if you are, um, if you are defending yourself or like speaking up for yourself or advocating for your child, um, without a lawyer, um, then, you know, know your rights, know what's right for your baby and you have a right to speak up for yourself and speak up for your child and, you know, you have a right to get the full amount that, your, that the non-custodial parent is capable of contributing if the child was at a two-parent home. So it's either based off of wages, um, whatever they make, they make $15 or $50 an hour, you know? And then like in Texas, they have a cap where, you know, they only cap the first $10,000 of their income. It's a little less than that, I think it's like 9,200. Um, so let's say he makes 13,000, they're only gonna cap it on that 9,200. So you, you know, for one child, it'll be like $1,800. But let's say he makes $100,000 a month, then that's a different story. So no, you're right. That's where you go to the deviation. Okay, well judge, I understand, but he makes a substantial amount beyond what the norm is so you know if we were in a two-parent home my child would be have access to this type of lifestyle so th those matter so it's not always think about the best interest of the child no it's not his responsibility to pay your rent your bills your none of that but it is his responsibility to make sure your child has food shelter um what is it food shelter clothing and extracurricular activities are shared responsibilities so I hope that helped y'all mommy gang. Yay! Y'all know I love y'all. Y'all know I got y'all back. And y'all know I'm gonna be back with some more videos. I'ma just drop these two at the same time. So I just dropped a video about motherhood, single mom, baby mom. Y'all want some more tea? Y'all gotta go watch that one. But other than that, 
I hope this was helpful. If y'all have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. I know I got y'all. I'm going to try to respond to every single last one of them. Um, and I love y'all. And we gang gang for life. Okay. All right. See y'all in the next video. Say bye, Parker. Bye, Parker.